The Ultimate Fighting Championship was in Edmonton. We're going to get to that in a little bit, uh, but we will start with the NFL. The National Football League trade deadline has come and basically gone now, and uh, quite a few moves. We're going to kind of weave those in as we do the, the recap here, but I, I think the biggest news from the weekend is the New Orleans Saints firing head coach Dennis Allen. That was a dreadful loss against the Carolina Panthers, and the type of losses that, or that's the type of loss that gets coaches fired. Um, and so this was one, I kind of feel similar to the Robert Salah one. Obviously, it doesn't have quite the same um, magnitude given the difference in New Orleans and New York when it comes to media coverage. But I, I, I think that this is a flawed roster and coaching isn't necessarily just the biggest problem out in New Orleans. But I also don't think Dennis Allen is a very good coach and I don't think he's doing anything to fix the problem with the Saints. So I really do feel like this is one of those teams that needs to start over. They have tried desperately to kind of string from the Breeze era into whatever, I guess the Derek Carr era here now, and they have tried to do that while being just severely hamstrung by the, the salary cap and trying to make these little moves to be able to just get enough to try to just get by in a division that you actually can kind of just get by in, but it is so clear now that they aren't just getting by, and it is actually a, a big struggle out in New Orleans right now. So I, I think that this season is a bit of a, hey, it ain't happening. Let's see if we, we, we got Olave. Dude is a stud when he's not getting knocked unconscious out on the field. Um, We've probably probably ridden that Camaro horse into the ground. Let's see if we can get anything for that and try to rebuild this thing because it's just, it is not working out in New Orleans right now. And that is going to have to start with a new coach. For Dennis Allen, I, I think probably the head coaching days are done. He is still a very smart defensive mind though. And so I do think he will end up with one of those types of jobs in the near future. The Washington Commanders making a big move with Marshawn Lattimore going to Washington. We talked about it. It was brought up in the, the Twitch live chat a couple of weeks ago, wondering if Lattimore would be that type of a move. And now you see the Saints kind of recognizing what we're talking about. They move into Washington and I love this for them. Washington's defense has been playing, I think, significantly over their heads all season long. I think Dan Quinn deserves a ton of credit for the job that he has done out in Washington. And it was, it, it, it I, I think that there is a ceiling to what they were doing. But now you address the talent deficiency by bringing in a Marshawn Lattimore. Now you can start to take this thing a little bit more seriously. And they, they floated the story out there a couple weeks ago or a few days ago, sorry, that Washington is now starting to become a destination for players, which it's never been before. Things are going pretty well out there. Jaden Daniels has turned the fortunes of this franchise around, and they are looking like a legitimately pretty good football team. Um, on to the actual games. And to me, the biggest takeaway from what was a bit of a eh, week in the NFL is that the Baltimore Ravens reminded us how good they are. Every now and then, they'll have a couple of stinkers, right? The Cleveland game sucked. The Raider game sucked. But that game against Buffalo is still the best any team has looked this season. And then they came out here against the Denver Broncos team that everyone's like, hey, this is this team's a little bit plucky. Like maybe they maybe Sean Payton is a pretty good coach. And maybe Bo Nix wasn't an awful pick at 12 overall. And oh, what's that? It's 41 to 10. Oh. Oops. Yeah, Baltimore is that good. That this was a hey, in case y'all forgot, this is what we can do against this team that might still be a playoff team in the AFC. They just went out and big brothered them for 60 minutes of football. A, a dominant performance from the Ravens that just again reminds us all who the Baltimore Ravens really, really are. So we figured out who the Ravens are. I still have no idea who the Colts are. The defense was supposed to be better. I don't think it is. The offense was supposed to be better with Joe Flacco. It wasn't. And so now this is just a team that just screams mid to me. And you don't want to overreact too much to one game because Brian Flores has been coaching the shit out of that defense all year long out in Minnesota. And that has, I, I, I think that that is something that they kind of took advantage of and really whooped Joe Flacco and kind of exposed that group. But also... There is going to be a point where the Joe Flacco thing does turn back into a pumpkin. And I don't know if it is necessarily now, but that was the worst possible outcome for the Colts, who sit there, presumed franchise quarterback, 
because... I mean, for a lot of reasons, but one of them is the offense just hasn't looked as good. And then the offense goes out there and looks terrible. Now, I don't think it would look good against Minnesota either way, but now it is a really difficult situation for Indianapolis to be in because I think genuinely the smarter thing for this organization would to do or to do, sorry, would be to roll Anthony Richardson out there and just see what you have in this kid who has started barely any games since high school a few years ago. Like the, the main thing around this kid is lack of experience. He's not going to get that hanging out behind Joe Flacco in his second year in the NFL. So I think you need to get this kid out there and I think you need to have him playing these actual games. But I do genuinely understand that you have to be concerned about like the whole leader of men thing and this isn't this isn't just we need to figure out what we have in this quarterback this is a a relatively talented roster like I said I think the defense is eh but like with Pittman and Taylor and and Downs uh, on offense um and I think an offensive line that they've done a pretty good job with like there are some talented football players on this team they're not just gonna be like oh yeah no you guys figure out the quarterback thing and playoffs or no playoffs will be fine We'll, we'll just be hanging out over here that's cool they want to get into the postseason in an AFC where it feels like that is a real possibility for this team, even at four and five, to get it in there or to get in there. And so what Indianapolis has to kind of balance now is that locker room thinking that Joe Flacco gives them the best chance to win, but also needing to figure out what you spent the fourth overall pick on a couple of years ago. So a very interesting balancing act out in Indianapolis right now. But on the other side of that one, the Vikings stepped up in this game. That defense, again, is just miserable to play against. And I think we forgot that the last couple of weeks. But Brian Flores with a nice little reminder there. This was a really important win for Sam Darnold. Um... I have in my notes, Darnold is so important to this team. So breaking instant analysis, quarterback, important to two football team. But this was, this was the type of game Sam Darnold would lose maybe even last year. But throughout his career, he's losing that game because it starts off really, really sloppy for them. And a lot of times that would build on itself. And then you'd have just this head scratch. And like, how did we just lose to the Colts 10 to three? Like what, what we're supposed to be a contender, at least for the playoffs. Contenders for playoffs don't lose to the Colts 10 to three. What are we doing? But he came out, credit Addison with a fantastic diving catch. Um, Justin Jefferson was a beast in this game as well. So credit the the guys around him. But I, I think that this is the type of game that Darnold would have lost a bit ago. And instead he comes out, puts a bad first half behind him and comes up with a few really big plays in that second half, giving Minnesota a win, helping them keep pace in the NFC North. Uh, Over in the NFC East, the Dallas Cowboys are done to done done. And I know that there have been a couple people trying to walk back the um, Dak Prescott. Oh, who can really tell what he said on the sideline? All of us can. He said we fucking suck. And you know why he said they fucking suck? Because they fucking suck, man. Um, This is just, it's not a good football team. Even with Dak, they weren't great. And then that looked bad. Um, A non-contact throwing injury to the hamstring area, I believe it was. And um, him saying he's never felt like that before. Not great. Not great. And now, it's, like... It's just, it's bad. Like, the offense was bad. Um, you, you have one of your big free agent signings scratched from the game, or at least sitting for the game, because he just decided to no-show some team meetings. Defensively, it was supposed to be the real strength of this team, and they, through injury and lack of quality play, have been kind of picked apart. So, that's not ideal. And now you add on this DAC injury... Cooper Rush is going to get a pretty substantial look. I think it would be interesting to see what Trey Lance has with this team. Um, But Dak Prescott just signed this big contract. So this isn't a, well, let's see what we have in a couple of these guys. This is, can we please try to keep our heads above water and maybe make a bit of a push if Dak comes back? But I think for Dallas, what they really should do is just bottom this thing out. See what kind of good draft pick you can get and hope for next year that you can turn this thing around. But in an NFC East where Philly's going to be good for a while, probably. And we just talked about how the commanders are just getting started. Uh, Giants suck. You don't have to worry about them. But there's two teams you have to worry about. So a lot to figure out out in Dallas. In Miami, the Dolphins finally showing some signs of life. Tua works them down for a touchdown late to tie the game. Bills need a 61-yard field goal to win that game. So, uh, like, this was so clearly the best the Dolphins have looked all season long. It is not even close. And this was the thing with Tua, is, like, yes, he is one hit away from some pretty substantial long-term repercussions in the whole brain area. And that's terrifying. 
The other thing I have said, though, for the last year and a bit, every time it's, oh, well, he's a hit away. It's like, yeah, it's football. Man, no one was saying that about uh, Olave, and then he got stretchered off, right? No no one is saying that about any of these guys, and then all of a sudden, well, there's a big hit because this is a collision sport, and now they're concussed. Everyone in football is a hit away. It's football. So to just, oh, well, to uh, injury risk. It's like, yeah, they all are, man. They all are. So... I think you have to kind of take it at face value, the talent this team has, and how much more effectively this offense runs with Tua Tungavailoa at the quarterback spot. It might be too late for them to make a run this year. They're two and six, but as we talked about a bit before, this team is only two and a half games out of a playoff spot right now. It's a long road back, but hear me out. Their next three games, they're at the Rams, which... The Rams don't necessarily have the home field problem that the Chargers do, and the Rams just looked good against Seattle. This is the biggest game of the year for the Dolphins. I think that this is, it's a winnable one. Anyway, if they want to kind of justify me spending the next two minutes talking about them making it to the playoffs, that's the type of game they win. The next one after that is the Raiders who suck. The next one after that, the Patriots. Uh, ditto. So three winnable games in your next three. That puts you at five and seven. Then you play against the Packers. Uh, sorry, five and six. Um, you play against the Packers, you lose, probably. Uh, Packers are a better football team. So all of a sudden, we're five and seven. Then home against the Jets. Feels like a win right now. All of a sudden, this team is six and seven. Couple tough games down the stretch, but the last game in the regular season, it is at New York. And what a spot that would be if Tua could help drag this team into the postseason at, let's say, nine and eight. Um, and maybe put some stuff behind him about not playing well in cold weather, going into Gotham and playing really well with your season on the line in minus a bajillion because it'll be December or January. That would be such a huge moment for Miami. And so the the the, the stage is set for almost... that. This feels like putting a lot on a 2-6 and six team right now and a quarterback who got just violently hit the second last time we saw him on a football field. But there is a real opportunity here for Tua to almost rewrite his legacy in the back half of this season that I, I think it's going to tell a lot about what the Miami Dolphins actually have in that quarterback and in that team down the stretch here. Um, we're, we're jumping around between conferences now. Back to the NFC. The Eagles put on another good showing. And we said before, NBA Jam rules. This is three in a row. They're officially on fire. It wasn't the dominant performance we were maybe looking for, but it was still a really, really good showing. The one thing that concerns me about this team is that there just becomes a point where they just stop doing anything. That is on defense. It is on offense. It is everywhere. And that hadn't crept up the last couple of games. It almost did in this one where Jacksonville was allowed to, to kind of hang around. But still... That's a good win for Philadelphia. And obviously, like, the, the Saquon Barkley highlight is sensational and just shows the type of absurd skill that this kid has. And I think they're going to need that now a little bit more with A.J. Brown going down with an injury again. Um, Smith makes a fantastic catch in the end zone. Uh, Jahan Dotson had a phenomenal catch in this game as well. That kind of gets overlooked because Saquon Barkley reverse hurdled a dude. But th this, is, this is still a talented football team. The defense has played better the last few weeks, albeit not necessarily against the most resistance. But the defense has played quite well. Offensively, this team, I do think, still can put some things together. I'm a little surprised, unless something has happened here, um, coming up to the deadline, uh, I, I'm a little bit surprised that it has stayed a little bit quiet now on the Eagles front. Yeah, seeing it now, I don't think that they made a trade here. So a little bit quiet, they didn't do anything there, but this is still a very good football team. Um, uh, out in Green Bay, Jordan Love struggled in this game, and that was really frustrating. And I, I think we do tend to put some kind of old feelings about these teams onto the new ones. And oh man, this is, it was set up perfectly. Jordan Love, it's playing out in the elements. This is what Green Bay wants. It's like, it's, it was that way with Brett Favre because he played in this forever. And it was that way with Aaron Rodgers because he played in this forever. Jordan Love has played like four bad weather games in Green Bay. Let's let him ease into this a little bit before that becomes this superpower that he has. Like, that game sucked to play in, probably. It's raining, it's cold, it's Green Bay in November. Like, that that had to be a little bit miserable. He's also still, I think, very obviously hampered by an injury. So I don't think that this is, too, that this is not to write off Jordan Love. This is just a, hey, can we pause on some of the old narratives that worked while this kid kind of gets used to those elements and winning in those types of things. 
But credit to the, the, the Lions that this was the one game in the elements they were going to have this year that they needed to go out and show what they could do. And Jordan, uh, uh, sorry, um, Jared Goff doesn't have the blow away game you would like. It's because they didn't need it. The defense came up with a big pick six. Um, offensively, Montgomery and Gibbs were fantastic. Goff just did enough to get them there. A nice touchdown pass to Amon Ross St. Brown. They were talking about it on Good Morning Football. Goff has completed his last 30 passes to Amon Ross St. Brown, which is now an NFL record. Those guys are working so well together. And this is th this is Goff, right? Like he has taken a step forward, but he is kind of just do enough to get you there guy. And he does that this week for the Lions, who now, th that was... This is another one where I come away really, really impressed with what I have seen from the Detroit Lions. And now they get a little bit better, adding Zadarius Smith here at the deadline as another pass rusher. That defense was playing quite well, and they were able to get after um, Jordan Love forcing that, that, that pick six. And that's without Aiden Hutchinson, who is absolutely not coming back this season. So now you add in another pass rusher to a defensive unit that was kind of getting by just on identity and hard work. Now you add a little bit more of that talent and it makes that team again, just a little bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, it's another frustrating loss for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, th this is two, I think, bad losses this year. The uh, jaw-droppingly insane loss against the New York Giants. And now this one, that was there for them all game. And it's just, it's this thing. They had it against New England. They have it in this one as well. And they had it against the Giants where it's just like, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll oh, we lost? Oh, okay. Like, it just, it never feels like there's, like, it feels like there is another gear that this team just can't quite punch it into and that has to be incredibly frustrating and it is incredibly frustrating if say you have plus 700 for them to win the division or something like that just saying um so a frustrating one but a good win for the la rams in that spot